the day before on the flight when we went to New York, he said, I got a surprise for you. And I was like, yo, tell me what it is. He was like, no, I'm not gonna tell you, just focus. I'm like, no, 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 tell me what it is. Like, uh, and he was like, uh, just know there's gonna be a thousand, thousand Greek uh, fans, the flags and all that. We were able to uh, get the tickets and, you know, put them in the game. I was like, oh, that's amazing. It's just incredible. Like everybody's doing, their part to help win a game, you know? And, you know, some people don't get in the game and in the locker room, they do their part to help a teammate be in a good place. I mean, all these pieces connect together and you have the result of winning. You know, I'm proud of, you know, Thanasis, but I'm proud of everybody. Mamadi, Elijah, Jordan, Sam, um, Justin, Axel, all those guys that, they don't have a chance to get in the game, but they keep the energy, like they give good energy to the team. They talk to everybody. Uh, the atmosphere in the locker room is so good. You know, they just help the team any way that, that they can. And I just felt like that was a way to help the team. I'm happy that he did it and I'm proud of it that he did it. Sorry, it took me a little while to get here. Um, Giannis, for you, um, that was the most minutes you've played in any playoff series. Uh, that series against the Nets. Um, I'm not going to ask you how you're feeling because I know you're going to tell me that you feel good. Um, but f for you, uh, I, what did it mean for, for Bud to trust you in that way? Like, we haven't seen him use you in, like, the same way that Jason used to use you in the playoffs, like, during these three years. This is, like, the first time I can really remember going all the way in, I'm playing you that much. Uh, it was good. Um... You know, prepare my body all year long for, you know, moments like that. Being able to uh, play 40 minutes, you know, 42, 45, 48, whatever the case might be, 53. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, and he knows, he knows the way I am. If I get tired, I'm, I'm gonna let him know. You know, if I get tired and I need the 30 second break or a minute break, you know, usually we have a great, way to communicate about that, that um, he can pull me out and pull me right back. But, uh, and as I said, I prepared my body all year for this. And um, I'm happy that, you know, he trusts me, that I can, uh, you know, play the game and uh, be affected out there without just, you know, walking around and being tired. Uh, but as I said, you know, whenever I get tired or I get out of breath uh, and I've, you know, run up and down 10 times or whatever the case might be, he, he understands you know, and he sees in my face when, you know, he knows when to take me out for a minute or two and put me back in. How much more control do you feel like that gives you over the game? Like, can you actually feel that? Like getting to play eight more minutes or whatever it is? Like, can you feel being able to control the game a little bit more? No, I feel I feel the same. Actually, sometimes when I, like, those games feel so long to me. You know, like, I look at the uh, time up, I'm like, damn, I'm still in the third quarter. You know, because like you gotta kind of get used to it, right? But like, like I felt control last year when I was playing, you know, 30 minutes a game. You know, I was able to be, you know, effective and control the game as much as possible. But uh, no, it, feel, it feels the same. It feels the same. Just the game just feels a little bit longer. Uh, PJ during the series against the Nets said the thing that like makes him the most upset defensively is when guys help. And then you guys give up assists. Like, so he was like, that third quarter in game five, you guys give up five assists to Durant. And he was like, at that point, Durant's getting his, and then the whole team is getting theirs as well. Um, for you, how do you try – help defense is so much a part of what you do as a defender. How do you try to find that balance of, you know, trusting your guy one-on-one, -on -one, not helping too much, and, like, staying home? Because it feels like something that will be important again uh, this series with Trey Young. Like I got everybody got to do, you know, everybody got to do the job. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're upset or not, you know, um, just got to do your job. And if your job is to uh, help, uh, help a little bit and then recover, that's what you got to do. And then you got to live with the outcome. Um, for me, you know, I've, I've, you know, tried to be active uh, all season long in, uh, in the playoffs. So I'm just going to do my job. You know, at the end of the day, if, uh, when uh, PJ or whatever the case might be, whoever guards Trey Young or Bogey or whoever has the ball, you know, get a little bit upset uh, 
of me over helping, you know, that that's going to be, you know, that's going to be the case. But at the end of the day, I got to do my job. I got to do what coach told me to do. And um, because we got to make it as tough as possible for them. But I understand what he means that uh, when KD scores, he scores. And then when he's, He's not in a position to score and he passes the ball, he gets his teammates involved in the game. So that kind of pisses you off because he gets the best of both worlds. So I understand that. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, we still got to do our job. And then for you offensively, um, do you feel like I was talking to Bud about it a little bit? It feels like you improve as the series goes on. And I know your mindset is like, improve day by day, always get better. But in a playoff series, just how important do you feel like it is to figure out? you know, something in game one that you can take to game two and then also figure something out in game two that you can take to three and four and five and six and seven to like build as the series goes on. Very important. You know, that's, you know, that's what the team that wins does, you know, um, adjust from game one to game two to game three, figure out ways to get better. Um, that's what I try to do also, you know, I'd, we're going to game one, we don't, we don't know what to expect. You know, you, you don't know how they're going to guard you. You don't know what the game plan is. They don't know our game plan. So after game one, you know, you get ready for game two. Now you know a little bit better what you to expect. And then um, to game three, a little bit better, and, you know, it goes, goes like that. So, yeah, my mindset always has been get better each day, get, get better each game. And um, that's what we're going to try to do as a team. Like Andrews? Hey, Giannis, I, I have two for you. First, I'm just wondering, uh, three years ago, I think we talked quite a bit about a team that had so much fight, had so much talent, but didn't have the experience. And you all were talking about how you didn't want it to matter. I'm wondering three years later, if you reflect on having been there before, having that experience mattering any more than it did to you then. Uh, obviously, it's going to help us a little bit that we've been here before. Um but at the end of the day, we're still playing basketball, you know, and um, like the previous series, we were going against KD, James Harden, Kyrie. They've been champions, been there before, and uh, we were able to advance, you know. So you never know how it's going to end up, you know, working out. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, I've said it in the past, like I try not as much to focus in the past and what happened. I learned from it and I just move on. Uh, this is a totally different um Series, different scenario, different players, different time, um, and it's it's go, it's going to be hard. Like it's not going to be easy at all. Like they play great, they move the ball, they get a lot of uh, threes. And it doesn't really matter if you have experience. Like they're playing good basketball, you know. So it's going to be hard. We got to do our job, uh, enjoy the game, and uh, hopefully, you know, we've learned from our past and um, we're in a position right now to put ourselves in a position to win the game. And then secondly, for me, Giannis, I know you have a deep appreciation for players who have kind of been through it, have been through the losses, have put in the work, and that has been Trey Young's path. I'm wondering what uh, impresses you most or stands out to you most about him. Well, he, he's an amazing player, man. Um, you know, what he can do for his size, the way he can get down the lane and, you know, get everybody involved, look for his shot, create for his own self. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And I think this is second year, third year in the league. Yeah, like what he's done is, you know, three year span. It's unbelievable. Like, so he got to, you know, keep, you know, getting better, keep believing in himself. And uh, the sky's the limit for him. He's going to be, he's going to be a great player for a lot of years to come in this league. Thank you. Jim Ozarski. Yes. I, well, speaking of Trey, I, I think he missed two of the games this year. So I don't know if that one game can draw on or, or last year, but I'm curious that your vantage point when he, um, when he lifts that floater, but sometimes he kind of disguises it as a lob to someone. I, I'm just wondering from your point of view, is it hard to tell which, which is which, like if it's an actual shot attempt for him or if he's actually lobbing it and maybe what, how like difficult is that to maybe try to fool a, de a defender or help defender? Yeah, it's, it, it's hard. You know, especially when you're coming down the lane and you're looking, looking at the uh, the lab guy, and you're throwing it. Like if you're playing with it, it's hard. Like you are having the defense, you're making them guess every single time, right? But at the end of the day, we gotta do our 
our game plan? What's our game plan? You know, um, are we going to jab for the floater? Are we going to let him shoot the floater 25 times? You know, are we not going to let him get to the floater? You know, like at the end of the day, we have to focus on ourselves and what we can control. Like at the end of the day, if he comes down, he plays with the floater and he looks at uh, he looks away or he looks at the rim or whatever the case might be. Obviously, it's going to be tough. You know, he's going. But we have to focus on ourselves. We got to focus on what we're going to do, how we're going to help from behind for, for the lab. So the lab is not there. So, or he's going to get on the floor. Uh, but to answer your question, yeah, it's definitely keeps you guessing for sure. Yeah. I, I know at this stage, there is no, I, I, you're not overlooking anyone or, or would, would, would think otherwise. But I, when you watch them in the way that they've won on the road, They've had big comebacks. Um, is it one of those things where you have to kind of keep that in mind that that emotionally for them, if, even if they're down big at Pfizer, like the hot, they're a team that maybe can feed off of that and, you know, you can't really let up. You know what I mean? Do you try to factor that in in the game plan of, of sure. hey? <laughs> for sure. Uh, they're, they're a great team. Um, we, are, we are totally aware of the uh, one in both series that they played game once. So we, we, we know that going to, uh, into game one. We know that they've uh, come back by, from being down. We know that they're playing good basketball. As I said, it's, it's not going to be easy. Like, it's, it's going to be hard. You know, we got to be like, we got to play for 48 minutes. We got to trust one another. We got to make it as tough as possible for them. Uh, but as we, we know that they're a great team and a very dangerous team. So we all, we all are aware of it. But... Um, at the same time, we got to focus on ourselves. We got to enjoy the game, and we're going to see how it's going to play out. Yeah. Quickly for me, honest, um, I, when did when did you know Thanasis? Uh, maybe you were involved too. Bought or helped buy the tickets for the fans in Brooklyn. I know you acknowledged the Greek fans showing out in Game Seven. When did you know? Did you know? And just again, your you speak to your brothers. I guess um, impact in that way and wanting to help you guys in sort of that energetic level a different way um like he 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 tries not to like bother me a lot about stuff you know um of the court he lets me focus but he told me um that the day before on the flight when we went to new york he said i got a surprise for you and i was like yo tell me what it is he was like no i'm not gonna tell you just focus I'm like no 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 tell me what it is like we have uh we have a few time, like the game is tomorrow at 8.30, like I can focus. Uh, and he was like, uh, just know there's going to be a thousand, thousand Greek uh, fans, the flags and all that. And uh, me and this guy were able to uh, get the tickets and, you know, put them in the game. I was like, oh, that's amazing. You know, that's amazing. And um, it's, it's just, it's just incredible. It's like, it's amazing because like everybody is doing their part to help win a game, you know? And, you know, some people don't get in the game and in the locker room, they do the part to help a teammate be in a good place to, you know, win the game and all these pieces connect together and you have the result of winning, you know? So, you know, I'm proud of, you know, Thanasis, but I'm proud of everybody like, and guys that Mamadi, Elijah, Jordan, Sam, uh, Justin, Axel, all those guys that didn't have a chance to get in the game, but they keep the energy, like they give good energy to the team. They talk to everybody. Uh, the atmosphere in the locker room is so good. Um, you know, they just help the team in the way, in the, any way that, that they can, you know? So uh, Antonis felt like that was a way to help the team. You know, so I'm happy that he did it, and I'm proud of it that he did it. Thank you. Steve McGargy. I'm just wondering, with both teams in this series, but both teams in this series coming off game seven road wins, just how tough is it to kind of turn the page and focus, not look back and kind of focus on what's on the now? And I'm wondering, having a couple of days off after game seven, how did that help just enable the, in terms of – being able to get that mental, physical rest to prepare for this series after what y'all went through the last week? Um, be, being able to have a few days was good for our bodies. Um, but coming from game seven on the road, big win for our organization, it's, um, it's hard 
so like turn the page. It's not it's not that easy because it was it was a great game. It was a great game to watch, great game to play, to be a part of. But in order for us to be great, that's what we gotta do. That's in the past now. That's over with. Um, tomorrow is game one. We gotta we gotta enjoy the game. We gotta play hard, compete, and we gotta be able to. We gotta put ourselves in a position to win game one. You know what happened in Brooklyn. Happy we enjoyed it, but now we gotta we moved on from it. Like we focus on winning game one. Stephanie Sutton. All right, let's go to Chancellor Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Stephanie. Go ahead. I just want to know, do you feel the state of Wisconsin and the city of Milwaukee behind you and the Bucks as you head into the Eastern Conference Finals and how hungry this state is to have you guys go back to the NBA Finals for the first time since 1974? Um, <clears throat> no, I de we definitely feel the love uh, from the fans and um, the support, like, you know, they came to the airport before we went to Brooklyn. They, they showed up in the airport after we came back. Um, so it was amazing having guys, uh, having people outside the Pfizer Forum, you know, uh, the plaza watching the game and um, <clears throat> supporting us from uh, here. Or when we go to the arena and the, it's, you know, the atmosphere is amazing. But at the end of the day, um, Obviously, I know that they're excited to, you know, about basketball and uh, about us doing well. But at the end of the day, we gotta we gotta focus on ourselves. We gotta focus and do our job. Like we cannot focus on outside what's going on the outside. We gotta focus on what's going on in the team. How can we be a locked team to win game one? And how can we be us? You know, how can we play good basketball? How can we have great habits, you know, um, obviously everybody's excited, but I feel like you cannot think about that, you know, because it just adds, it just adds pressure. So uh, we got to focus on what we do and uh, what we've been doing since day one. Um, as I said, keep playing good basketball and everything will take care of itself. Now, if you're going to go to the NBA finals, I don't know. I can't predict the future. I wish I, I could, but uh, all I know is that we're going to be able to compete again compete against any team we play. Giannis, can I also ask you, what are your thoughts on the recent video singer Cheryl Crow posted about her and her son being big fans of yours and your thoughts on a celebrity like that wanting to see you guys win and play? I'm not on social media. I didn't see the video, but uh, I'll probably see it later. You guys will show me. Yeah. All right, one more to Chancellor Johnson. Hey, Giannis, um, you guys have had a lot of success at home. Uh, you know, this postseason, um, with the energy in the arena, how have you guys been able to feed off of that? Great energy. Uh, it feels amazing just to uh, just have all the fans back, um, packed stadium, our family's there to enjoy the game. It just feels like we're back to normal again. And um, just be able to compete in front of our crowd. It's a great feeling. All right. Thanks, Giannis. Appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, bye -bye.